Next tonight, the painter Edward Burrow was a modern master who didn't quite fit into the standard narrative of 20th century art. So his work has been largely and criminally glossed over by the history books. As well as being a wonderful artist, Burrow was a unique character, a true English eccentric. I thought it was high time to find out a bit more about him. From chorus girls to Harlem street life, Edward Burrow was drawn to those on the margins of society. His name may not be familiar, but Burrow is one of the overlooked geniuses of British art and one of the most acute chroniclers of the 20th century. Although his is definitely not the official version of history. He painted humanity's dark side. It's warmongers, lowlifes, and outsiders. Illuminating dark and murky corners wherever he went. Edward Burrow died in 1976. I never met him. And I'm not sure how well even his very best friends really knew him. Certainly, I'm not sure how much they ever knew about his art, because Burrow was quite possibly the single most elusive British artist of the 20th century. He very, very rarely talked about his enigmatic images. In fact, he was so reticent that he didn't even like to give them titles. And he only ever gave one interview to the media, and that was a filmed interview that he conducted towards the end of his life. It's rare footage, not very often seen, and they keep it here in the archive of the British Film Institute. Here it is. Recorded four years before his death, the interview shows an artist deeply uncomfortable about revealing anything of himself or his art, a man who hated being interviewed, who would much rather be doing what he does best. I'm just bored. I don't know what to do. What would you be doing if we weren't here? Painting. Born in 1905, Burrow was a delicate and sickly child, plagued by illness. From a very young age, he suffered from chronic, debilitating arthritis. His joints began visibly to deform from the age of five or six, and the pain never left him for the rest of his life. His one buffer against the hand fate had dealt him was prosperity. He was the son of a rich lawyer. Burrow would never need to earn a living. He was born in this house, Springfield, near Rye, and would spend much of his life living here with his mother and his father, a semi-permanent invalid, always forced to return to this, his refuge and main painting space. The window is one of Burroughs' earliest pictures, painted when he was still a teenager. Like many of his works, its whereabouts is uncertain, and it's known only in black and white reproduction. It's an image that reveals his sense of his own predicament with piercing clarity. An ambiguous figure sits on this side of the window, not wheelchair-bound, but certainly chair-bound, while outside, life in all its vigour goes on. Two girls can be seen through the window, perhaps his sisters, little Betsy and Anne. But the central figure, Burroughs' alter ego, remains fixed and frozen in place. It's as if there would always be a sheet of glass between him and the world. He could look, but not touch. Throughout his childhood, Burrow escaped the limits of his own body through painting and drawing. Art had become the most important thing in his life. And at the young age of 15 in 1921, he decided to escape Rye for the Chelsea College of Art in London. He loved London's spirit of limitless possibility, but it was the hidden, darker side of the city that he caricatured in many of his early drawings. Burrow received a fairly straightforward art education by the standards of the early 1920s, with a very strong emphasis on draftsmanship, which perhaps helps to explain his 
very confident and strong sense of line. But equally important to him were the friends he made at art school, lifelong friends, Clover Pritchard, the future photographer Barbara Kersima, and the future ballet dancer Billy Chapel. And what they had in common was a great sense of fun and, as Barrow later said, essentially frivolity. We spent all our time going to the cinema and reading Vogue magazine. And I think those things, too, filtered straight through into his art. As well as going to the movies, the young Burrow went to galleries of modern art, absorbing the new languages of cubism, collage and abstraction, a mix of influences soon to be reflected in his own work. The snack bar is unusual for Burrow in that it's one of his very rare oil paintings, and yet I think it is a classic Burrow image and it gives us a wonderful snapshot of where he's at as an artist in his early maturity. He's clearly fascinated by Leger, by Picasso, by painting the modern world as a kind of collage of startling detail. The wood grain of a door, the tiling of a floor, the texture of a bar counter. But I think what makes it quintessentially Borough-esque is the sense that underneath the apparently innocent surface of the scene, all kinds of rather disturbing currents seem to be running. And it was this ability to find the darkness in the everyday that gave his work an increasing sense of menace and melancholy throughout his life. Mm -hmm.